Welcome to the World of Art with Paul Creamy. We're at my studio at 1000 Main Street, Hanson, Mass. And we're doing this show today on what's going on in the world with the virus. I've done about, I think, maybe 10 paintings and prints. And uh, I decided to have a little show and, and make history part of this particular time and, and, and what's going on in this particular part of the world, all the world. We've been caught up in this thing for about two months now, and it's starting to finally dissipate and go away. So we're doing this show in my studio, and I've done a bunch of these paintings. This happens to be a watercolor. And uh, I don't know, I was sitting down thinking, what could I do? And all of a sudden I said, well, I'll, I'll think I'll do a watercolor, because I've been doing printmaking in, in all kinds of different prints. And most of the things that I have today are prints, except for this one, it's a watercolor. And it tells me all of the things that are happening with it, rising up through all of this stuff. If you look at it long enough, you start to see stuff that's going on. And even I, who, who painted this particular thing, didn't see half of what I saw until I sat across the studio in my chair and I looked at it and I started meditating. And I said, you know, we are caught up in a moment of history and we're dragged into this whole nonsense. And it's a wonderful thing to realize that we have lived through something that God blessed us with because it's a cleansing. I mean, everything that happens in this world happens for a reason. And all of us realize that this, we pay a part in everything that happens. So I've done this watercolor, and I think it came out really beautiful. The colors are very cheer. I think it's at the end of this particular uh, virus. I think it's starting to dissipate, and that's what I try to show with the happy colors on the top. The black is all of the stuff that was negative. So I only put a little in because I wanted it to be over. Now I've got a bunch of things, so I'm gonna put them on one at a time. I'll get this one out of the way. I'll tell you, I started with one print and it went on this print here. I'm really loving. In fact, it's hanging in my bedroom. And I call it God's oneness with us. Everything about a circle means that it's oneness. And all of the stuff, the Star of David, all of the stuff that happens around us is brought in to the crucifix right here in the cross in this deals with, and all of the little dots are mankind being sanctified and blessed by God. So everything that we do have and have done uh, somehow connected to what we're going through in this particular situation. So I try to get that feeling in this particular print. And you wouldn't believe how long it took to do this. This is all dot by dot. I do the print. The print had this center. It had these little dots in it. And all of this, it had some of these lines and some of the prints. But most of it was hand done, touched, dap by dap by dap. And that's a very powerful exp explanation of this particular piece. So I go into another one like that. And this one here, I didn't even title this one. I just put this in the frame. And it deals with the same kind of thing. It deals with the oneness and, and being called into the center of it all. And it's a whole mm, stormy kind of feeling that it... I, I did this second one after the, the black and white one and I thought that it had a lot to say. And I said I'll sign it and I'll... Uh, give it a title, but I haven't given it a title yet. But I, I thought that it would say, the blue is over, we're out of the blues. We're going into a better 
time and energy with this particular print. So I wanted to get away from just the one or two colors, so I decided to do something with a little more. So I did this particular print. And it's called The Way to Oneness. And it so shows us that this line going across and this, that we were separated from where we were to what we, what we went through. And where all of this stuff is going on, all of the people are being called up, all of these little black dots of the souls that have rised up. And all of these people are still here and they're going through all of the waves and all of the, and the mask and everything and the standing away from each other. And I think that it speaks in a very powerful way. It's called the way to oneness. That we have to get through situations sometimes that are so hard and, and hurtful. And the only way we get through all of this is to be in line with God in a special way. I think that we, this is what I feel is missing from our world in this time and space. That we've gotten away from the reality of how important it is to have a relationship with God. I'm going to put these in order for a second. These two were done when it's really getting This one's called God is the Helper. And he's putting all of this energy back down into the soul of the world. And he's trying to get everybody to get along. I have a granddaughter that's a, she's an assistant in a hospital in New York. And she sent my wife and I a, a letter yesterday that broke our hearts that all of the people that she has to take care of and that, and that passing away and I'm thinking about these particular pictures and how I'm going to talk about this you know it touches us in a different way each person has a different look at this situation so I'm trying to show people that we will get through the storm we will get past all of this because we do have help from above if we only ask for it so that's what I'm trying to uh, not get everybody crazy about religion in the sense that it's pushed down your throat. It's just that we do have a purpose. We do have a meaning. We do have a reason. This is another one of those. You can see the violence in this, in the sadness, and it's crushing this whole entire world until it goes away. And I think it goes away because we've done the right things. We've all stayed in, we've all worn masks, and we're all participating in a, an event that's incredibly dangerous, yet we are going to make it through because we're persistent in what we're doing and we're doing the right thing. And I think that President Trump has done a great job. I know that he screwed up here and there. Who doesn't? When none of us are perfect, it, he has a hard job. I think his job is really at this time, he is the president to handle this situation. He closed down the country, did what he was supposed to, and he saved millions of people, I think. I think he saved a whole bunch of lives. This one here deals with the virus itself and how it works and the activity and the all of these circles of the virus going through the body and these black lines of the darkness. And all of a sudden, right here, there's the Star of David. And that Star of David is cleansing all of the stuff that's going on in this particular piece. And you know, when I was working on it, I didn't see the star until I almost got to the very end. And I say it's the great star with, I don't have my glasses, so I'm having trouble reading it from this distance. Uh, the great star under, uh, I can't read it. But, so it shows the different colors and the different designs and the different feelings of all of this. We're getting there. And I don't want to go too fast. 
but I have some, still a bunch of different things to show. These two are the last two that I've done and on this particular virus. And this one here, you know, a lot of people don't know, the Star of David is a triangle. It's a triangle by God coming down like this. And then mankind going up with the same triangle becomes the Star of David. A lot of people don't know that. And, it, and this is what this was all about. God is pulling us out of this particular situation. He's coming down. He's being brought in to all of this massive nonsense with this virus going all over the world. And he's pulling it all away. And he's pulling it up. And he's setting these people free. And the virus is going to dissipate and go away. And that we will never be the same after living through something like this. We'll always look at each other. I put down just 19. I thought I'd do that whole series, just 19. Because I think that that's the title of this particular thing. So the second one I did after I did this one deals with a circle. A circle is oneness. And this, all of this stuff that's going on around us, still this circle here is protecting us and guiding us and directing us. Everything that's going through that circle is being cleansed and set free and not being destroyed or taken away. It's taking back what we have lost and it's giving us a new experience. In the last one of this particular series is this blue one. And it's called freedom. That blue is a beautiful soft color in it. To me, there's three colors in the Trinity in my heart and in my mind. It's red, yellow, and blue. And, and it's the three primary colors. And so I've always felt that blue was the Holy Spirit and he's the one that protects and talks to us and guides us and directs us. So that's why I did this particular circle and I called it freedom. And I think that we are all trying to get to that place where we are free and healthy and our souls are set free. So when I, in, in between all of this that I've been doing, I started looking around at some of my older pieces. And I grabbed a anoleum cut that I did maybe... Oh, God, in the 70s, and it's called The Kiss. And when I did this, I set it up so that it would do more than just give you one view of a kiss. I wanted it to say a lot more that it, a kiss is more than just one way. It's, it's something that's goes on and on and on and changes and gets better and gets more attention. But particularly when I did this particular print, I, I said to myself, this is going to be something that people are really going to get a kick out of. I hope that they like it. So I dragged out that. I wanted a little more joy and peace. This is called the forever kiss. So it's the man kissing the woman and then it's the woman kissing the man, and it's the forever kiss, because it's going on and on and on. And I said to myself, well, now that you've got this, what would you do if you did six prints, and you cut them up, and you glued them together, and you put them up, and what you'd have is called the never-ending kiss. There's six different prints all glued together and the man is on top and the woman is at the bottom and she's on top and the, the hair is giving us this beautiful sea of movement and to figure out how to do this took me two weeks. I did a ton of sketches and I kind of figured out, cut up the sketches and then set them up. 
but I didn't know that it was going to be as dynamic as this. I really love this. I've had this and I printed it in the 80s and I did it in blue. But you know something, a friend of mine who buys a lot of my work, one of my patrons, called me up and said, I sent her one of these in, in the mail with the red. And she said, it took my breath away. The red has that passion and love. And like it just jumps off the, the paper. And I said, well, that's what I want in all of my work. I want my work to have some kind of a feeling of emotions. So we've done this particular show. I have a few more things I can show you, and then it will be over. Let me move this out of the way. I mean, people don't know. They think that I, I just do other stuff that is uh, abstract and, and impressionist and all that. I went to the museum school when I was a youngster, 12 years old, uh, or when I was in junior high school, in high school, and I did all kinds of these prints and, and uh, linoleum cuts. And I, they said to me, well, how would you like to do an etching? And I said, I'd love to do an etching. And so they gave me a piece of zinc. And what you do is you cover the zinc with a, a varnish, and then you use a needle and you scratch the design. But this one here was done different. This was done with me at my house with my little Dremel tool and I used plexiglass. I flipped, when you do a print, you do it backwards. People don't realize that when a print is printed on a piece of paper, it had to have been drawn backwards. Because you, so how you do that and how I did it when I was a little kid doing linoleum cuts is I took a mirror and I put it on the table and I put the picture of what I wanted to do in front of the mirror and it reversed the picture. And then I would do the sketches. And oh my God, let me just go get one from over here that you might really love. I'll just be a second. This is when I did one. This one here I did when I was a little older and I had gotten a call from the VA saying that I had a two years left on the GI Bill. So I went back to the museum school and this is a print that I made doing a needle backwards, scratching out all of the varnish, put it in nitric acid and it bites into the plate and the lines come out and then you take it out. This happens to be, that green happens to be watercolor. I just put a touch of that in but the color of the print and I put a tiny little watercolor on the bonds. But this is the Hornstress Bombs in, uh, in Hingham and it's a sad story that I, when I was in the, another building in, in Rockland Somebody stole the plates. I don't know why they stole them, but they, they, they figured they were worth something. I never got this plate back, but I only have this one print. And they wouldn't have had this one print if somebody didn't bring it back to me and give it to me. They were, con um, they were moving into a condo and she was downsizing. And she said it didn't fit in what she was doing. And I was thrilled to get it back. As I mean, I sold this to a woman about 35 years ago. And uh, I was thrilled. It has this really quiet, rustic feeling. Hunchless Farms is a milk farm in Hingham. A lot of people know it. So you've got a little bit of feedback of what I do when it comes to printmaking and what happens in our lives makes a difference of what happens in what we do as artists. We should make a statement. We should speak about what's going on and how it's going on and how we feel. God bless and good night. Amen. Amen.